I'm going to show you how to capture some awesome night photos of trailing sparks with a little steel wool and a long shutter. I'm going to keep this relatively informal and I'm going to start by saying it's been raining a lot where I'm at. Uh, for the last three, four days, the ground is saturated and it's dark outside. And I thought, you know, I really want to get out with the camera, really want to have some fun. What can I do? And then it hit me. I love to take pictures of fireworks. I love the way the uh, sparks come off the fireworks and the way you can get the streams. I think it looks, uh, it looks great. And so I know that you can burn steel wool. And when you do it, if you whip it around fast enough, uh, it's going to make all kinds of sparks. Those sparks are going to fly. And if we have a long shutter, we should have an awesome image. So, what do I have with me? Well, I have a little bag of some steel wool. Now, this is, um, this is a zero, zero. So, uh, if you know anything about steel wool, it goes down to, I think, uh, four, zero, five, zero, something in that range. And it, it goes all the way up from there. But I would recommend anywhere from just a, a single zero down to the four zeros. And again, this is just a double zero. I just happen to have this with me because I use steel wool. Um, I use it around the house when I'm sanding. But when you take it out, if you're not familiar with it, it looks like this right here. This is a steel wool pad. So um, what you're going to do with this is you're going to want something like a, and I've got it right here, this is a whisk. So the whisk, this is, this is going to act like a cage. So I'm going to take the steel wool, you're going to pull it apart a little bit, and we're going to cram it right inside this whisk. And once it's in there, uh, you're going to be good to go. But uh, the goal here is that you're going to want to swing this around. So you're going to need a rope or a wire or something uh, to tie off to the whisk. This is about six foot of rope. Um, and this will allow me to hold it and swing. Speaking of holding, you want to be safe. Okay, so you, you don't want to, um, you don't want to get out there. First, keep in mind you want to do this in like a parking lot. Um, you want to ensure the area is wet. You, you don't want to light anything on fire. Don't do anything stupid with it, right? So, uh, but protect yourself as well. So what I have here are some gloves. You know, you want to, you want to wear some gloves to protect your hands. Um, I've got some uh, eye protection here. Keep in mind, sparks are flying. You don't want to get a spark in your eye. And it's uh, summertime, so, so it's warm, but I got a hoodie. Okay, so the hoodie's going to protect my head. Long sleeves right here. As I mentioned, I have the gloves. You're going to need something to light the steel wool with, so I just got a little lighter right here. You can use a match, batteries, whatever. Whatever you have, that'll work. Um, I'm going to shoot this with my Nikon equipment. Now, when we get out there, it's going to be dark, so I'm not anticipating I'm going to get really any good quality video. We'll see. I'll do the best I can with that. Um, but Let's talk for just a minute about the settings and how this is going to work out. And um, again, this is my Nikon equipment. When I get out there, um, I'm going to focus in on myself. Now, I'm going to do this by myself to begin with, right? I, I don't have any helpers here. So my plan is uh, I'm going to focus on something. I'll, I'll find something that's about uh, maybe 15, 20 feet away, put my camera on a tripod, and I'll use a flashlight, something to that extent, where I'm going to focus on where I'm going to be. And then, as far as the camera goes, uh, once we lock in on focus, um, at that point, I'm going to, we'll be in full manual, I'm going to shoot raw, and I'm going to go about 20 seconds, so I'll put my f-stop at around maybe an f10, f11, maybe f8, so, somewhere in that range. I shoot the same type of f-stop for um, fireworks. And now, the um, shutter of 20 seconds, that, that's a little long, so I, I don't know, I'll play with that. Uh, we'll see where these photos come out, and I'll let you guys know here in just a few. So, that's how we're going to lay this out. My ISO, I'm going to probably drive that down to 100 or so, and um, I think that's about it. So, with all that said, let's go out there and let's have some fun. I have the camera set up right next to me, and as mentioned, I have the settings all programmed in. Uh, the one challenging thing is trying to get that focus, so um, I tried to focus on something that was about 15 feet away, and I used the flashlight to light it up so I can lock in on that focus, and then set to manual, and then I have the tripod set up, 
and we're ready to go. I enjoyed taking those photos and had a lot of fun doing it. It took me a lot longer than I thought, not because I was doing it by myself, but because when I went out, it started to rain, and it just continued to do that. But it gave me time to drive around and find a decent location. It was saturated, and when the rain broke, I saw the moon come out, and I thought, maybe we can grab just a little bit of ambient light in here. So one quick notable is, instead of shooting for an ISO of around 100 or 200, I ended up going with uh, 500 and my shutter speed um, it was right around 20 uh, for a handful of those shots I think I was an f11 on that and then I also took a handful of shots at 10 seconds uh, and I think I kept it right at f11 on those as well um, I went through three pads I think of steel wool on that you got to keep in mind that if you plan to do this um, you get about uh, I'm gonna say anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds and it really depends on how tightly you pack the wool in there and how fast you're spinning it. So if you spin it really fast, it's introducing a lot of oxygen and that's gonna burn really quick. So nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. If you decide to do this, please, please be careful and ensure that you are in a completely saturated area, parking lots are best, and have a lot of fun doing it, but be careful. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. More often than not, I put out videos about videography and a lot about photography and technology, but you never know what you might get. The channel's called The Real World, and it's for a reason. Sometimes I'll do videos about automobile maintenance or homeownership, things like that. So, nonetheless, until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.